<laughs> oh, and by the way, people, remember uh, when uh, there was that hurricane in Carolina? Well, guess what? I had too many reports of the federal government, FEMA, stopping the relief workers from going into the area. I mean, here it is. People have trucks full of relief stuff. You know, food, water, blankets. Uh, and they told us they were stopped. Sometimes they would confiscate the stuff. Other times they would make them turn around and go back home. Meanwhile, here it is winter. Uh, they're living in tents. But the heathen aliens are being put up in hotels. Uh, all paid for by our money. Isn't that lovely? So, yeah. That's, uh, that is basically how they, uh, what they think about us. And why is that? So, and you got to realize something. Carolina is what they call the Bible Belt. You go to the Carolinas, there's a church on every corner just about. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not really. Not really. So, I don't know. Of course, they're all infiltrated, but uh, yeah. All right, so keep that in mind. Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be one of the more most controversial Bible studies you could ever imagine. It's going to be on Genesis chapter 3. What really happened in the Garden of Eden. Now, remember two very, very important Bible verses. One of them is in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Paul commands Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then there's the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. It's funny. James writes his letter to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad and says greetings. And yet the church says, oh, well, you know, the, the tribes of Israel, they're lost. They're the lost tribes of Israel. Well, maybe they're lost to the demon nominational churches, but they're not lost to God. And they weren't lost to James. Verse 2, my brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 5, very important. Listen carefully. If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God. Do you lack wisdom? Ask the Lord for wisdom. I mean, James tells you right here, you don't have wisdom, ask God for it. If any of you lack wisdom, wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a sea a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed 
For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't be double-minded, people. Be single-minded toward the Lord. And if you ask, if you lack wisdom, ask of the Lord. You know, and and Paul wrote Timothy to you know study to show yourself approved. Well, guess what? That's what we're going to do today. And your demon nominational churches. This is probably the most hated subject. I mean, absolutely the most hated of all subjects. What happened in Genesis chapter 3? Now, what I think we should do is just go ahead and read the whole chapter and then start defining some words. So, if you want to pause and make a prayer and ask the Lord for wisdom, ask him to open your understanding, please feel free to do so. I mean, after all, that's what the pause button's for, right? Because you know what? The Bible says, oh, well, let's see, I'm paraphrasing, but meat is for soldiers and milk is for babes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 1, Paul writes, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. In other words, I can't tell you spiritual things because you're in the flesh. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, because guess what? You feed meat to a newborn baby, they are going to die because they, it would just clog up their stomach. They can't digest meat. You have to wait until the baby is weaned. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it Neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? That's the deal, people. Most people go to church looking for Jesus looking for, for meat, and they don't find it. There's a, I guess you could call it a joke, but I don't consider it funny. A man was praying, ask, you know, he moved to a man, a Christian man moved to a new town, a new city. And he was praying. A man that really loved the Lord. And he says, Lord, I have a question for you. Answer me, please. Well, the Lord Jesus appeared unto him. And uh, he says, Lord, I'm honored that you would appear unto me, but I have a question. So Jesus says, okay, go ahead, ask. And the man says, Lord, I'm in this big city here. I just moved here. And I want, I want to know, what church here in this town, in this city, should I attend? Because I don't know where to go. And Jesus said, you know, I don't know because I haven't been in any of them. Yeah, Jesus isn't in any of the modern 501c3 churches. He's just not there. And if you're lucky, you will get milk. But most of them are just water. There's no nutrition. All right, Genesis chapter 3. Let's do it. Verse 1. 
Now the serpent, very interesting word. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, now this is the serpent talking to the woman. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, hath God said, you see, the first thing, first recorded instance of the serpent in the Bible, he's, he's questioning God's word. He's getting ready to question God's word. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So here it is. First thing, he was questioning God's word, and now he's lying. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. I'm telling you the truth, God's a liar. That's basically, yeah. Verse 5. Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. You know, it makes me wonder. I, I, you know what popped in my mind when I was read this? The Masonic Lodge and their little aprons, right? And why fig leaves? Do you know the fig tree is the symbol of Judah? And Judah was one of the 12 tribes. It was the tribe of the kings. David, you know, David and Goliath, and Solomon, and Christ were all from the tribe of Judah. So they made themselves aprons. Verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees, amongst the trees of the garden. Oh yeah, let me tell you something. When you do something God says not to do, you're, you're going to hide yourself from the Lord. And when you need the Lord, he's going to hide himself from you. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where are you? As if God doesn't know where you are, right? I know I've said it a few times, but uh, when I took law in college, no, I wasn't going to be a lawyer, but, uh, you know, business law. I had a, uh, an instructor, and he says, a good prosecuting attorney will never ask a witness a question that he does not already know the answer to. He already knows the answer. 
So if you lie to him, you're in trouble. And if you tell the truth, you're going to prove the prosecuting attorney's point. So either way, you're in trouble. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, now this is Adam speaking, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, now this is God speaking, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Oh, yeah. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. You see, God, it's your fault. You know that woman that you gave me? Yeah, it, it's, well, it's her fault, but it's your fault for giving her to me. And she did it. So, yeah, Adam's really taking responsibility here, isn't he? The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. That's a very interesting word, beguiled. We're going to get to that. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity. You know what the word enmity means? Hatred. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. See, God's talking to the serpent here. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Boy, women liberation sure don't like that, huh? Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Oh boy, here it comes. Here it comes. Look out. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Now, you got to understand something. Sometimes the word all does not mean 
all. I mean, after all, uh, let's see, let me find it. Doesn't the Bible say, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? Yes, it does. Now, you can find that in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And boy, I know that's me. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 10, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. All right, so did all sin? Did Jesus sin? Well, no. Not if you believe Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing, that, th seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, See, Jesus, the Son of God, he's our great high priest. Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points, in all points, tempted like as we are yet without sin. See, Jesus had no sin. If Jesus had sinned, we're looking for another Savior. Jesus had to be the sinless lamb to be an acceptable sacrifice to the Father. Jesus was without sin. So does, so is, you know, uh, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God? Jesus was that without sin. So all doesn't always mean all. Of course, Jesus was God in the flesh. He wasn't just a mere man. Verse, okay, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Okay. Back to uh, Genesis 3 and verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Was Eve the mother of goldfish? No, obviously not. Was she the mother of reindeer? No. No. So she, she was the mother of all living Adamites. She was the mother of all the children of Adam. So when it says she was the mother of all living, take it with a grain of salt. Okay? And let's face it, people. Eve was the mother of all of Adam's children. Now, that's a very important point. Verse 21. We'll get back to that, though. Verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Now, how do you make coats of skins? What kind of skins? Animal skins. Right? Did God have to kill an animal to skin it and, and give them clothes? I mean, when you're wearing a coat of clothes, a coat of skins of a dead animal, I mean, you're wearing death. Think about that. Was this the first time animal sacrifice was performed? I mean, the Bible doesn't go into a lot of detail right here, but when you get into the book of Leviticus, Leviticus was the book for the tribe of Levi, which were the tribes of one of the 12 tribes, which was the tribe that was set aside, sanctified by the Lord to serve him in the tabernacle and the temple. The tribe of Levi 
They were to be the priests. They were to serve the Lord. Judah was to be the king, the kings. So basically, Levi was the religious government, and the king was the civil government, sort of like the president, right? But personally, it doesn't go into much detail, but it says that the Lord God made coats of skins and clothed them. So they were naked, and they were clothed with the skins of dead animals. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. See, Adam knew good, but now he knows, not only does he know good, but now he knows evil. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Can you imagine if Adam in his sinful fallen state partook of the tree of life and lived forever? I mean, do you know the Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels? It was. In Matthew chapter 25, let's read the following. Let's start in verse 31. You know, the Bible is just such a large book. I'm not an expert on any one part of it. I try to have a working knowledge of the whole thing. But so many doctrines are woven into so many different parts of the Bible. It's, uh, it's hard to know where to start, and sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. All right, Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Huh. Just think, if there's holy angels, well... That means there's unholy angels, right? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be divided all nations. Do you know that's the same word as uh, that they use, they translate as Gentiles? It's the same word. Sometimes the, they translate the word as nations Sometimes they translated the same word as Gentiles. Just remember that. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. You know, people, you go to a modern church nowadays, It's entertainment for the goats. That's exactly what it is. These preachers, they throw up Masonic hand signs and Satanic hand signs. That's because they, they, they're they letting their uh, those that are initiated into the occult know who they serve. You know, that's why I, I kind of, I, I, I hate studying that kind of stuff. I really do, but you know, I delved into the occult stuff. I mean heavy-duty Satanism stuff for about, almost almost a year. I mean, I went to satanic bookstores, and I bought the really heavy devil stuff. And I asked the Lord, before I did this, I asked the Lord, I says, Lord, please protect me, because I know what I'm going to be dealing with. And I did it because I wanted to know what the enemy taught and believed so that I could never easily be fooled by these devils and their tricks. And basically everything the Bible teaches, the occultists will teach the opposite. And everything the occultists teach is the opposite of what the Bible teaches. So when the Bible says, thou shalt not, the Satanists will say, do what thou wilt. Do what you will. If it feels good, do it. 
And the Bible says, thou shall not. Matthew 25 and verse 32. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. You ever heard uh, right-wingers and left-wingers? Yeah, the goats are going to be on the left. Huh, isn't that funny? Don't the Satanists love goats? Is that a coincidence? Or is it? Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Do you know that God the Father created the, the kingdom, his kingdom from the foundation of the world? From the very beginning, his kingdom was prepared for you. Think about that, people. Verse 35. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger. And ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Or when, when saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, or clothed thee? Or when we saw thee sick or in prison came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say, also unto them on the left hand. Oh yeah. All those people that are proud of being le the left. What's he going to say? Depart from me. Depart from me. Ye cursed. Into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil. And his angels. You see, hell fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, ye did it not to one of the least of these, Ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Okay, go back to Genesis chapter 3. Oh, let's see. All right, Genesis chapter 3, verse 23. Therefore, now let's read verse 22 again. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is 
become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. I hope that when the Lord returns, he'll count me worthy to have a flaming sword on, my, on the way down here so that uh, when we're caught up in the air with him, I hope he gives me a flaming sword because i tell you what, there are some heads I would like to chop off. Yeah, some wicked heads. Let me tell you something, people. You think things are bad now because you're getting your, your channels, your favorite channels are disappearing. You haven't seen anything yet. You're going to talk to people and tell them that these, these were the good old days because you've, you know, when have you missed a meal or when have you been cold or too hot? And I'm not talking about when you leave your air-conditioned house to go to your to the car during the day. Things are going to get really, really bad. And the because the the church people, uh, because the church people have tolerated evil instead of doing what the Lord commanded them to do in the Old Testament. God gave uh, his laws for a government in the Old Testament. But the people don't want it. The Bible tells you what to do with the sodomite. But the people don't want to do that. When things get really bad, Psalms 58.10 is going to come to be a very happy prophecy. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Boy, you don't hear that kind of stuff preached in church, do you? No. No, you hear the, well, God, God, God just, you know, he, God hates the sin, but, but he loves the sinner. Well, read Malachi 1. Sometimes God hates the sinner, like Esau. The Bible says, God loved, Jacob have, have, have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Why did God hate Esau? Genesis 3, if you go back far enough, it ties into Genesis 3 and Genesis 6. But people don't believe that stuff anymore. Well, let's take a look at John chapter 13. I guess we'll read the whole, well, maybe not the whole chapter, but till we get to the point. Verse 1, John 13, chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover... When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and went to God. He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself, 
So he took a towel and wrapped it around himself, right? After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Can you imagine that? Jesus was began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So, you know, this is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, Peter wanted him to wash not only his feet, but his hands and his head. You know, uh, let's take a look at a couple things here. So, why are washing the feet... In Proverbs 1.16, speaking of the, evil, the wicked, For their feet run to evil, and to make haste to shed blood. But in Psalms 119 and verse 101, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 119, verse 101, I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. In the book of Micah, verse 2 and verse 1, now, Peter wanted his feet washed. Now he wants his hands, right? Micah 2, 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Okay, so... Psalms 97.10 Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. And of course, feet running to evil, hands practicing evil. And what about the head? Well, the head is where people think up wickedness, right? So let's go back to John chapter 13. Okay, uh, verse 9. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean but not all. For he knew who should betray him, and therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, ye know what I have done to you. Ye call me master. Do you know that word master? is sometimes translated as rabbi. Ye call me master and lord, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then your lord and master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his lord, Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Now, remember this verse, 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me.
He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Remember that. Remember that. Didn't we read about the heel in Genesis 3? Oh yeah, we sure did. In verse 15. Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go and dissect this chapter. This is going to be a multi-part study. I have no idea how many it's going to be. I've been wanting to do this for years, but you know what? Let's do it. And if the YouTube or whoever kicks me off, you can find me on BitChute, B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E, or you can find me on uh, Reel.video. Real video. And I made a mistake. It was not uh, Mike Adams and his real video that was censoring my comments. It was that discuss... Uh, commenting service. Personally, uh, it's spelled D-I-S-Q-U-S, -S, but I, sp I pronounce it disgust. Because I had something that was pure Bible verses and they refused. Uh, not only did they refuse to post my comments by censoring them and moderating them and not approving them, but they've also deleted some of my comments that were there and then I go back and they're gone. Bible verses. So it's discussed. So hopefully uh, somebody, I know there's a couple people working on a new commenting service that's not going to have uh, censorship. I wrongly accused Real.Video of censorship and it wasn't them, it was discuss. Disgust. I'm disgusted with disgust. All right. Let's read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 again. Now the serpent. Now who's the serpent? Let's find out. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall, need, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, I got a question for you. Can serpents, can snakes talk? Uh... Not unless you're uh, Dr. Doolittle. And no, I didn't watch that movie. I just, yeah, I know about it, but I didn't watch it. Sorry, unless you're Eddie Murphy in a movie, you can't talk to snakes. Right? Now, is the serpent in Genesis 3, is that a snake hanging down from an apple tree and he's talking to this talking snake, you know, this talking snakes, you know, is that what really happens? Uh, or maybe not. Let's find out. All right, let's go to... Revelation chapter 12. And I did an entire study on Genesis, Revelation chapter 12 on a YouTube playlist. I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube. But uh, if anybody writes and asks me, you know, I'll, I'll find, I'll get you a link for it if I have to load it to somebody else. All right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her seat, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, if you don't know what this is, uh, Joseph had a dream. So you're talking about the book of Genesis. Genesis is a very important book, people. It's the foundation of the Bible. If you've never bothered to read the book of Genesis and the rest of the Old Testament, or the New Testament, for that matter. If, if your belief in the Lord Jesus is from John 3.16, you 
you might be in a world of hurt because, you know, the Bible, uh, Paul said, Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, all right, verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. All right, so there's a re great red dragon, a dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. If you don't know about the stars of heaven, you can read Job 38. And did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And if you don't know who this is, you're in trouble. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, that's the church, fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And here's the punchline, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. What? And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Why is he called an old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long, long, long time. Matter of fact, he was in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. See, the Bible, the King James at least, the, uh, the Bible will interpret the Bible if you let it. If you use one of the modern versions, the words are scrambled. You'll never make the connections. That's why you got to stick with the King James. Now, it's not to say you can't read another version to get a different point of view, but I would use the King James to interpret the King James. But that's just me. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ah, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And he overcame them, him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. You see, people, the church doesn't, the 501c3 businesses that masquerade as a church, they don't teach this to their, their customers, I guess you could say. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, see, the blood of Christ, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. You see, the blood of Christ, the word of their testimony, and they don't love their lives unto death. See, they'd rather die for Christ than live without him. But you don't hear that stuff preached in church. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, 
because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, you see, this is a figure of speech. Dragon, serpent, it's a figure of speech. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that, she might, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Remember this, people, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's an earthquake, people. Verse 17, And the dragon was wroth, that's angry, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, I did a, uh, an entire Bible study, if you want to, on, on Revelation 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that she that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So, what is this water? Well, if you let the Bible interpret the Bible, in Revelation 17 and verse 15, And he saith unto me, now, this is talking about Mystery Babylon. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So what's this flood that the serpent cast out of his mouth? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Diversity, people. The flood of the dragon is all this third world immigration. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, but... but Verse 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of her mouth. This is a prophecy. It hasn't happened yet, but it will. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and, and, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So who's the serpent? Verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Eve was not talking to a snake. Sorry, the Bible tells you. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Eve is talking to the prince of darkness. So we're going to do a study on Satan and Satanism and the characteristics of Satan uh, in the next one.
I've already gone almost an hour, so we're going to learn a lot about this serpent, which is not, sorry, it's not a snake hanging from an apple tree. I know everybody's seen that image in their mind because that's what they do in church. They show you images instead of reading from Scripture. So this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Greetings. This is part two of Genesis chapter three. What really happened in the Garden of Eden? So this is part two. And this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it to the book of Ezekiel. This is one book that is severely neglected. There's a lot of meat in what they call the major prophets. Uh, the major prophets are considered to be the books of Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. They're not called major because they're of more important, but rather it refers to their large content, their large books, as opposed to books like the book of Jonah and Amos and Nahum, which are considered the minor prophets because they were minor in size, not minor in importance. All right, so let's go to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. Now, in part one of Genesis chapter three, what really happened in the garden, I believe if you listen to that for an hour, that you can, you came to the same conclusion, if you let the Bible interpret the Bible, that the serpent of Genesis chapter three, the talking snake, if you will, was Satan and the devil himself. So let's take a look at some of the attributes of Satan, the devil. And if you look at the word devil, devil, um, it's basically the word evil, E-V-I-L, with a D in front of it. Think about that. And the word Satan means accuser because he accuses the brethren. All right, Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's do it. Verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now, there's a prince of Tyrus mentioned in this chapter, and there's also a king of Tyrus. And I believe the Prince of Tyrus is a man, but I believe the King of Tyrus, well, we'll get to that later. Verse 2, Son of man, say unto the Prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Now, if you've ever read the book of Daniel, you'll know that uh, the Lord revealed to him interpretation of dreams. Let's see. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasuries. I'm sorry, into thy treasures. By the great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches. 
Now, what's traffic? Uh, you're talking about being a merchant, you know, trading, merchant traders. That, that's what they call trafficking. And let's face it, if you're arrested for trafficking and drugs, that means you're smuggling and stuff, you know. But uh, so this guy was doing uh, trading, doing trading things. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness hmm you know uh satan is called an angel of light did you know that in second corinthians chapter 11 and you know what there's a lot of people out there that'll tell you that uh paul who wrote these books was a false apostle actually i think they're false workers but that's just my opinion you see paul wrote corinthians a letter in the city of corinth which was a city in greece and boy they hate they hate that uh, these people will tell you that the new testament was not originally written in greece they'll tell you jesus's name is not jesus uh, they'll tell you paul was a false apostle um, you know, and by the time you're done, what do you got? They'll tell you that uh, the Greeks were a bunch of anti-Semites that mistranslated the New Testament from the Hebrew. And by the, by the time you get done, what do you got? Nothing. I mean, if you take away all of Paul's writings, you got basically Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you got to throw away Acts because guess what? Acts can, uh, tells the story of Paul and his conversion on the way to Damascus. And then I guess you would have Jude, uh, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, maybe the book of James, you know, um, and Revelation. And that's it. That's the New Testament to these monsters. Well, guess what? I say they're false. Well, here we go. Paul writes about him right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. For no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. But his light is darkness, people. So, verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 28, verse 7. Behold, Therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. And it's talking about, you know, what's the pit? What's a grave? Isn't it a pit? Yeah. But there's a physical pit. And then there's a spiritual pit, the pit of hell. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? Somebody's getting ready to run you through with a sword, and you're going to tell him that you're God? Guess what? Ain't going to happen. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. 
for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. So here we're, we're changing. Before that was the prince of Tyrus, and they said that this prince that claims to be a god is going to be killed. He's going to be slain, right? And he says he's going to die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of the strangers. But now we're talking about the king of Tyrus. Keep that in mind. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So you're talking about the king of Tyrus is full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Is this man? I don't think so. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, this was probably, Ezekiel probably was a couple, maybe a couple thousand years after Adam and Eve. How could this person, this king of Tyrus, been in the Garden of Eden? I mean, you know, yeah, they lived a long time, you know, Methuselah and what have you. They lived, you know, hundreds of years. But this is like a couple thousand years after. I mean, this is after Abraham. This is after the flood. I mean, you're talking a long time after. This, this king of Tyrus couldn't possibly have been in the Garden of Eden unless we're talking about some, something other than human flesh. Thou hast been at Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workman, workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Now, Adam was formed from the dust of the earth, but... We're all born. We're not created. So if this being was created, it's not, uh, it's not human because it wasn't born. Verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? It's an angel. The anointed angel and a cover. Covered, covereth. What is it covereth? God's throne. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now what human, what human has been on the holy mountain of God and walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, none, I, to my knowledge. I'm not saying I know it all, but... Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. See, this king of Tyrus was perfect. God made him perfect from the day he was created till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Wickedness, sin. Think about that, people. Now, I want to point something out. Do you know God created this being perfect and then the being decided to rebel. Do you know that God made provisions for our redemption even before he created the earth? 
Oh, yeah. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, According as he hath chosen us, boy, I'll tell you what, that, that really, uh, there's people that are called free will, Arminians, whosoever will, they hate this. According as he, who's he, God, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Do you know that you were chosen by God before the foundation of the world, before even the earth was created, before the foundation of the world? God chose you. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Boy, that's some powerful stuff, people. Think about it. How about uh, this? Do you know that God made provisions for our redemption from sin, the fall of Adam, even before from the foundation of the world? You don't believe it? Revelation 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Worship who? The Antichrist, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the devil, the dragon. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written, not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, who's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world? Well, John the Baptist tells you in John chapter 1 and verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. So that solves the problem of that question. All right, let's go to... Um, Matthew 13, 35. We're going to get back to Ezekiel, trust me. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. You ever wonder why Jesus always spoke in parables? I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. In Matthew 25, 34, Then shall the king, and that's Christ, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You see, God created, the, the, the kingdom was prepared from the foundation of the world. So, you know, uh, boy, I tell you, it's some powerful stuff there. All right, let's go. Let's go back. All right, let's go back. I'm having problems with this. I'm going to end the study now. Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. I have no idea why my computer just quit the uh, sound. So I had to quit making that part two uh, of Genesis. I don't know what happened, but uh, sometimes the computer goes wacky. So this is going to be part three. We're going back to Ezekiel chapter 28. Now, the one point we were I was making in Genesis, uh, for Genesis three, was one: the serpent in the garden was Satan himself. Number two, was he was a beautiful created being that was created good, originally. Now let's take a look at Isaiah chapter forty-five and verse seven. The Lord says, I form the light and create darkness. 
Well, what is darkness? Darkness is just the absence of light, is it not? Cold is the absence of heat. So he says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. What? The Lord creates evil? Mm, sort of, yeah. I mean, after all, the Lord created Satan good, and then Satan got puffed up with pride in his heart, and then iniquity or wickedness and evil was found in, in him. So technically, God did create evil. However, originally God created everything good. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Want more proof? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. See, on the sixth day, God made everything and it was all good, even Satan. It was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So, let's go back to Ezekiel. Uh, darn, I guess we're going to have to go back because, you know, it's it's tough for uh, listeners when you listen to one thing and then something else comes along. So let's go back. Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Obviously, this is going to be Satan. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, why am I going this route? Well, guess what? Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Eve was not conversing with a snake. She was conversing with Satan, who was perfect in beauty and full of wisdom. She, you know, she wasn't talking to a snake hanging from an apple tree. I mean, that's the fairy tale that the satanic churches teach you. No, she's looking at a very intelligent, beautiful being who's offering her knowledge. Verse 13. Well, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Oh yeah, Satan was in Eden, the garden of God. He wasn't a talking snake. Every precious stone was I covering, the sardius, the topaz, uh, topaz and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in, the, in thee in the day that thou wast created, not born. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I've mentioned before, a cherub's an angel. And what did he cover? He covered the throne of God. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. No man has been ever been on the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, not born. Thou wast perfect. You see, Satan was perfect. In his ways, he was good. In thy ways, from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Sin, evil, wickedness. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Well, how, how is it? Violence. How, how, what? What? What's up with this? 
violence? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. All right, you want to know about the violence? Go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Isn't a war violent? Oh, yeah. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, a figure of speech. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. And neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is it an old serpent? Because it had been around in the Garden of Eden. It's been around for a long, long time. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And that's us. That's all of us. I guarantee you Satan's got me deceived, and you too, in some manner or form. Not completely, but... And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 28, verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Yeah. What, what, do you, what happens in a war? People get killed. Satan tried to kill God. The creature tried to destroy the creator. Very, very dumb move, if you ask me. Uh, so, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. See, Eve wasn't talking to a snake. She's, she's talking to maybe one of if not the most beautiful of God's creation, certainly one of his most beautiful. i That's my opinion. But he was beautiful. How much? I don't know. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. You see, Satan's called an angel of light. But the Lord says, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. How is this fulfilled? Let's take a look. Well, this is fulfilled in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then in verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You know, I was, uh, I think we should continue reading Ezekiel chapter 28. Oh, okay, let's see. We stopped... In verse 19, let's go to verse 20. 
Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon. Uh, Zidon was, if memory serves me correctly, was inhabited by the children of Canaan. You ever heard of the curse of Canaan? Noah? But I'm not 100% sure, but this isn't about Zidon, so let's just go. Son of man, set thy face against Zidon and prophesy, prophecy against it. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I shall have executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send into her pestilence, that's disease, and blood into her streets. That's death, people. You know, when, when, when you, all your blood comes out of your body, you're dead. That's it. And the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And there shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, that despise them, and they shall know that I am the Lord God. Uh, didn't God tell Adam that he would till the ground and there'd be thorns and thistles? But here it says, And there shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them. Paul was given a thorn in the flesh. Think about that. Jesus was given a crown of thorns. Think about that. Verse 25. Thus saith the Lord God, When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. Then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. You see, people, God is going to execute judgments upon those that despise Israel. And if you think it, you're talking about the that little country in the Middle East that hates Jesus Christ, you got a surprise coming. I suggest you read uh, Galatians 3.29. All right, this is going to be part three. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, Amen.